Jean-Marie Pittman, the GFAS Director of Accreditation for North, South, and Central America. In today's presentation, we will be talking about zoonotic disease and discussing some of the organisms that can cause zoonotic disease, the ways in which zoonotic diseases are transmitted, and some of the ways to prevent contracting zoonotic disease. <clears throat> okay, so what's a zoonotic disease? Zoonotic disease is a disease that can be passed between animals and humans. A zoonotic disease is actually more common than you might think. Scientists estimate that more than 6 in 10 infectious diseases in humans are spread by animals. Zoonotic diseases may be caused by viruses, such as the virus that causes rabies, bacteria, such as salmonella, that causes intestinal distress, parasites, such as sarcoptic mange mites, that cause scabies in humans, fungi, such as microsporum canis, that causes ringworm, and protozoa, such as giardia, that can cause severe diarrhea. Zoonotic diseases are transmitted from animals to humans in a number of ways. Some examples include diseases such as rabies that are contracted through the bite of an infected animal, scabies, which can be contracted by direct contact with an animal that has sarcoptic mange, pseudococcus, which can be contracted by the inhalation of bird feces, brucellosis, which can be contracted by ingesting unpasteurized milk or coming in contact with an infected fetus, and Lyme disease, which is transmitted from animals to humans through the bite of a tick. People working in animal sanctuaries, rescues, and wildlife rehabilitation facilities are at greater risk of contracting zoonotic disease than the general public. Some of the more common zoonotic diseases that can be encountered when working with domestic or wild animals include rabies, herpes virus, viral hepatitis, tuberculosis, psittacosis, ringworm, toxoplasmosis, salmonellosis, giardias, babies, brucellosis, campylobacteriosis, yersiniosis, and visceral larval migrants. GFAS standards require that verified or accredited facilities adhere to the following guidelines regarding the prevention of zoonotic disease. The sanctuary's veterinarian must be knowledgeable about the zoonotic diseases that may affect the animals at the sanctuary. All potential or emerging diseases have emergency procedures and a defined process to avoid transmission of disease through bites, scratches, body fluids, direct contact with animals, or other means. A physician with expertise in infectious disease is always consulted whenever an employee contracts an unusual illness or is exposed to an animal diagnosed with a zoonotic disease. When a reportable disease is identified, all appropriate local, state, provincial, and national regulatory officials are contacted. Now that's usually done by your veterinarian, but you should follow up and make sure that all the appropriate uh, people have been contacted. All areas where staff have contact direct contact with animals, have washing facilities available in the immediate vicinity, or an equivalent such as bacterial hand wipes. Human consumption by staff does not occur in the immediate area of animal contact. Rabies testing and vaccination protocols are determined and followed as needed. All staff and active volunteers are informed when a zoonotic disease occurs at the sanctuary. Determining an appropriate strategy for preventing zoonotic diseases will vary depending on the country or region, the species of animal housed, and the level of direct contact the staff have with the animals. Health professionals and veterinary professionals should always be consulted when designing a zoonotic disease prevention program. However, having a good understanding of zoonotic diseases, their causes and their modes of transmission will be helpful in designing a zoonotic disease prevention program that's specifically tailored to your facility. The following links have some excellent resources for understanding and preventing zoonotic disease. The Center of Disease Control has information, general information on zoonotic disease and up-to-date information on specific zoonotic diseases. There's also a fact sheet produced by the OSHA Alliance Program on zoonotic diseases. And the Wildlife Rehabilitation Information Directory has information about zoonotic diseases that are specific to wildlife. Once you are familiar with the zoonotic diseases that may present a challenge in your facility, 
you can take specific measures to prevent them. Some basic methods for preventing zoonotic disease transmission include talk with your doctor or health professional about appropriate vaccines and vaccine schedules, always wash hands and follow proper hygiene after coming in direct contact with animals, prevent animal bites and scratches by avoiding direct contact or using protective equipment, do not smoke, eat, or drink while working with animals or wearing soiled clothing, and protect sores and cuts with a waterproof bandage or wear waterproof gloves. Some additional methods for preventing zoonotic disease transmission include avoid direct contact with animal bedding, feces, urine, and other body fluids by wearing waterproof gloves. Reduce aerosol production in enclosures by avoiding the use of high pressure hoses or vigorous sweeping. Wear a mask when coming into contact with aerosolized animal bedding, feces, urine, or other body fluids. Wear a mask when working with the dust from bedding or hay. Check your body for ticks after working with wildlife. And wear insect repellent where appropriate to prevent bites from mosquitoes. <clears throat> In summary, Zoonotic disease is a disease that can be passed between animals and humans. Zoonotic diseases can be caused by viruses, bacteria, parasites, fungi, or protozoa. Zoonotic diseases are commonly transmitted by bites, direct contact, inhalation, ingestion, or vectors. Some common ways of preventing transmission of zoonotic disease include vaccinations, practicing good hygiene, wearing gloves, avoiding direct contact with animals and products, and avoiding bites from vectors and wearing gloves, masks, or other protective equipment. Thank you for joining us today on our in our 10 and 10 series. <clears throat>